All right, welcome everyone to our third presentation as part of our virtual Linesville Open House for 2021. I'm Andy Desco, I'm your producer for the segments here. We're gonna get started in just a minute. Um, please, as a reminder, check our Facebook and social media user policy. And please, if you do have any questions for us today, this session is about the introduction to fish prints. So please keep your comments and questions for us uh, relevant to the topic. If you do have other questions for us about fisheries or law enforcement or you know, other things related to fish, amphibians, and reptiles, you can go over to our website and go to the fishing hole account and enter your questions in there and our staff can reply to those other questions for you. So <clears throat> this morning's session, we're gonna have Chad Foster interviewing Cody Whipple, talking to us about uh, fish prints. As we get started here, uh, just give me one second. I'm gonna bring up a little bit of information about our Hunt Fish PA for you. All right, our Hunt Fish PA is our new online recreation licensing platform. This is your way to buy your fish, Pennsylvania fishing license to renew your boat registration, to get launch permits from us. So please check us out at huntfish.pa.gov. And as a quick reminder, your fishing license dollars go directly back to conservation and help our agency do what we do to protect, conserve, and enhance those aquatic resources of the Commonwealth. In just a second, I'm gonna hand the microphone off to Chad. All right, Chad, are you ready to go? Yep, I'm good, Andy. Thank you for, for the introduction today. And like I said, welcome everybody to the virtual Linesville State Fish Hatchery Open House. Uh, this one's gonna be mainly about fish print. And, uh, you know, we wish we could be there in person and providing the fish print opportunity. It's always one of our most popular events at the Linesville State Fish Hatchery Open House. It's a great way for families to come, um, you know, make a fish print, take those fish print t-shirts home with them. And as a way to, you know, think about the open house that they just uh, attended. So it's a great, a great family activity. And uh, we wanted this to be part of the virtual intro, uh, the virtual Linesville State Fish Hatchery open house. So with us today is Cody Whipple and he's the North Central Region Education Specialist. So he uh, put together a video. So if you wanna cue that video up, Andy, and we'll get started with the video and then we go have some question and answer and, and learn more about Cody and, and the things he does for the Fish and Boat Commission shortly. Hello, I'm Cody Whipple with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. In today's video, I'm going to introduce you to a fun and easy activity known as fish prints. So what is a fish print? Well, we just did this one on this t-shirt here, and in the following videos, I'm gonna show you the steps and the materials that we use to actually create this fish print so you can wear it around. So this is a really fun and easy activity that you can do with your family, you can do it with your friends, you can do it with your kids, or you can do it with your students. So fish prints actually date back to hundreds of years ago to Japan, where they would actually make these fish prints to record their catches and to learn a little bit about the external anatomy of fish. So they would use something called sumi ink, and that's a non-toxic ink, so that way when they use that, they would still be able to consume that fish after they'd make these fish prints. So stick with us as we go through the actual process of how to do these fish prints. Now I'm going to go over some of the things that you need to actually do these fish print t-shirts that I'm going to show you how to make today. One of those things is your directions. So you'll actually be able to find these directions on Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission's website, fishandboat.com, under our activities and education portal. If you go to the PA Fishes section of that activities and education portal, you'll go to activities, and that's where you'll find this document called fish prints. And it's going to give you a little bit of the history 
of fist prints, the materials that you're going to need, and then how to actually complete it. So the very first thing that you're going to need after you have your instructions is a dead fish. So you can do this with, a, with an actual dead fish. If you are going to be keeping fish, make sure that that fish is in season, it's of legal size limit, and you can find and you have kept over your creel limit for that fish as well. You can find all of that information in the current year's summary guide from the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Today, we don't have dead fish. We actually just have some rubber fish, and you can get these off of Amazon in groups of different fishes or individual per fish. So here we have a bluegill, represent our spiny rayed fish. We also have a salmonid or a trout, and we'll tell that by our adipose fin for our soft rayed fish. So you can really do some different things. You can see why this activity is such a great educational tool. The next things that you're going to need are some paint and some brushes. So if you're going to be doing this on a t-shirt, you're going to want to make sure that you have a paint that's good for fabric, like a textile paint. If you're going to be doing it on paper, then you just need some regular acrylic paint. Um, centuries ago when they used to do this they actually utilized that sumi ink and they utilized rice paper so you can actually take this as far to do the actual ancient form of this art and utilize that and you can get really really artistic with this go in and add detail after and turn this into a really great way to record your catches so if you caught a really big fish maybe you still wanted to eat it if you wanted to get a skin mount of that fish you probably aren't going to be able to consume that fish so this gives a nice way for you to preserve the memory of that fish and preserve the memory at the table when you go to eat it. You're also going to need t-shirts if you're doing this on a t-shirt. And with that, we'll get started and show you how to make this fish print. So let's go ahead and make our fish print. And you might notice that this can get a little bit messy, especially if you're working with small children. So it's a good idea to also have lots of paper towels, water, and soap readily available so you can clean yourself up as you are working with paint. So let's go ahead and make our fish print. So the first thing I'm going to do is since we are using a t-shirt, we've got our textile paint here. I'm going to go ahead and get quite a bit of paint on my brush. And you will notice that if you don't use enough paint, that fish print might not come out as well as you want it to. So I'm just going to go ahead and start getting a good layer of paint on our fish. So we've picked a walleye here. This is going to represent our spiny rayed fish and you'll notice that this is our dorsal fin right here it's already up out and nice if you're using a real fish you're going to have to put something behind that as a backing and maybe glue or pin that fin open so you can get that effect so maybe like a piece of styrofoam or something like that since we're using these rubber fish that fin's already nice and open for us so while you're painting this fish this is a good idea to introduce some of the external anatomy of the fish you're doing so the great thing about this paint and about these fish prints is that it gets all the little intricate details of this fish and that's going to show up on your shirt as well so you're getting a lot of paint on these scales and it's a good time to talk about the scales of a fish talk about the different kinds of scales what type of scales might this fish have talk about the dorsal fin talk about the operculum or gill plate talk about the mouth how the mouth is oriented on the fish maybe talk about the fish's eye since this is a walleye you can talk about hey, what makes these walleye special, especially with their eyes and how they can see in low light conditions or at night. Talk about the caudal fin or the tail. We can talk about the anal fin. We can talk about the pelvic fins, the pectoral fin. Again, talk about these dorsal or the dorsal fin. So you get a really good layer of paint on your fish. And I'm just going to add a little bit more here. And talk about the color of the fish as well. Maybe talk about why the fish, and I'm just going to use green and do the whole fish in green because green is my favorite color. But maybe if you were going to use two colors or maybe three colors, talk about why the top of the fish is darker than the bottom of the fish and why that might be advantageous for that fish. So you continue to apply that paint. We're then going to take our t-shirt. Now within our t-shirt, we, we have a clean piece of paper in between right inside our t-shirt and that's just to keep the color from bleeding through to the back when we do this so we're going to take and you're just going to gently place that t-shirt over your fish print now you're just going to press it's very important that you don't actually just move and slide this all around because you're just basically getting an impression or imprinting that fish onto the t-shirt so you really want to make sure you can find all those fins that we were just talking about so here i know i'm found the caudal fin or the tail fin. 
I'm up here, I'm around that dorsal fin, and I'm just pressing, making sure I get everything. Got our anal fin there, pressing down. And some of this paint's just coming off my fingers here. But once you do that, you're just gonna slowly peel this back. And there you've got your fish print. So you can do some extra things to make this a little bit more fun or even a little bit more educational. Say if we took the back of our paintbrush and maybe you want to, you know, make some cool designs in that fish, just like that. So that way, when you do it, you might come up with something like that just to make your t-shirt a little bit more unique and actually make it yours. If you want to make it a little bit more educational, you could get unique and use some of the different types of colors. So you could make this fish look like a bluegill. You could make this fish look like a pumpkin seed. Say if you added those blue lightning bolts down the face and a little red spot on the back of the ear flap. So that way it becomes a good educational tool to help your students learn about, okay, different species of fish and how can I identify them. You can make this salmonid here, you could make this a brown trout, you could make it a rainbow trout. It's a really good time to talk about the adipose fin and other types of fishes in Pennsylvania that might have an adipose fin as well that maybe don't have scales, but you could still make a fish print out of those. So if you do decide to make your fish prints on a cotton t-shirt, it's a really good idea to set those colors prior to throwing this shirt in the washing machine, or else you risk getting that fish print all over your other clothing, and you don't want that. So in order to set the colors, you're going to want to grab your iron, set it to the cotton setting. Then turn that shirt inside out and place a piece of pressing cloth in between the back of that shirt and the fish print. You're then going to iron the back of that shirt for 35 to 40 seconds and your colors should be set. It's also a really good idea to wash that t-shirt inside out so that way you can preserve your fish print t-shirt for even longer. So now I'm going to go get cleaned up. Happy painting and good luck fishing in Pennsylvania. Hello, I'm Cody Whipple with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. In today's video... Thanks, Andy. Great video, Cody. And uh, now let's uh, ask you some questions and then we'll get and see what kind of questions we get from Facebook out there and, uh, and go from there and continue this great talk about uh, fish print. So... Uh, the first question, we asked some questions over the past uh, day about the different staff we interviewed about if you were in college or you were looking for a career in environmental education, what advice would you give to somebody that's that's just into the field and just trying to get their, their name in the door? Any advice that you have for them? Uh, yeah, sure. Thanks for the question, Chad. And uh, hello, I'm Cody Whipple with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. And if you follow the PA Fish and Boat on Facebook or Instagram, you might have seen me before or heard me say that a lot. So when you're talking about getting to education, um, specifically with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission or in any natural resource field, the first uh, tip I would give everyone is you should already have, or maybe you're finding a newfound passion for the outdoors, uh, for fishing or for boating in Pennsylvania. And if you already have that passion, uh, you're probably going to fit right in uh, with a position such as this. Uh, if you're trying to get started, uh, some of the things that I did, I didn't go to school specifically for education. I actually went to school for a wildlife and fisheries. Uh, coming out of college, I moved around a little bit. I worked for the state of New York as a fisheries technician for a while, and then I knew I wanted to get back to Pennsylvania. Uh, you know, no knock against the state of New York, but in Pennsylvania, we have over 86,000 miles of flowing waterways, and I, I wanted to get back home. I wanted to explore those waterways and, and fish in those streams, so I actually got a position in the education side with the DCNR at some of the state parks that were from where I'm from up in north central PA in Tioga County. Uh, I really enjoyed that position, was able to to sort of find out like, hey, this education is really fun and it's really great to be able to teach people uh, about, the uh, about the outdoors and everything that we have available. So uh, when this position came open for the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission, I thought, okay, I'll throw my name in for this and, and let's see what happens because it, it fits my degree, it fits my background, and it, it's something that I'm really passionate about. So um, I had applied with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission uh, for some other positions previously and didn't get those. But the one key thing I, I would say is, you know, keep trying. Uh, don't give up. When if you, if you stay with it and stay motivated and keep on putting your name in and keep on trying to learn as much as you can 
uh, while you're doing all this and while you're in those positions as well, that's going to help you uh, essentially achieve your goals. So those are the some of the tips that I have. Perfect. I mean, that's that's great. That's how a lot of us started out. And I think if there's any additional seasonal work that we offer, I think the seasonal positions that the agency has, once uh, we're able to hire those again and get those fully staffed, I think that's a great way for for people that are interested in the outdoors and have the passion like you and I do that they can get in to do the things that we're able to do on a daily basis. So uh, with that, what about, uh, let's talk about some of your memorable fish catches. You know, you you did a presentation on your fish prints, but what, what are some of your more memorable fish uh, catches? Is that one behind you maybe on your desk? Is that is that one of those? Oh, well. I mean, geez, there's so many. And if you fish in Pennsylvania, we're really lucky to just have boundless fish throughout the whole entire state, whether you're targeting trout or cow or catfish or, you know, some bigger fish like muskie, even carp. I mean, I like I like fishing for carp. So some of my most memorable experience are growing up near the Tioga River and uh, actually going down and just uh, fishing for some common carp and having some really great drag screaming runs. Um, you know, I really enjoy traveling throughout the state. Lake Erie offers some great fishing opportunities and the smallmouth bass fishery in the Susquehanna River is a great fishery. I have some really memorable uh, catches of some smallmouth bass. And I mean, they're just an incredible fish to fish for because they fight so hard for their size, especially if they have some water uh, to fight in. So, you know, thinking back to some of my most mem memorable catches, you know, I'm not ashamed to say that. I, I mean, I really think about those common carp. I love fishing for carp. Perfect, Cody. I mean, I think everybody enjoys catching, you know, catching any fish that we get a chance to go after and target the muskie, the carp, the trout and the smallmouth, the, no matter, you know, what you, you target or no matter what we go after, it's always fun. And, you know, it's a lot about the experience more than catching or taking home or anything like that. So it's, it's great to see you out there and, and having plenty of those fun experiences. Um, I'll just add, just add something real quick, you know, before I had this position, I knew, you know, that we had state fish hatcheries throughout the state, but I never really realized the importance you know, of how those hatcheries work to provide all these different angling experiences throughout the state. So having the opportunity to go to Lionsville and see the staff there and see the important work that they do um, to raise these fish and then to stock them throughout Pennsylvania. Uh, really, it's amazing, and it's definitely something that we should all appreciate as anglers in Pennsylvania. Agreed. Um, so moving on, what are some of the more important fish handling techniques that anglers can use if they really don't want to take that fish home and they want to practice some catch and release? They don't want to keep all the fish they catch. And what are some of the key techniques in practicing catch and release out there? Yeah, so I mean, if you if you want to go fishing just to practice catch and release, um, so you're not going to take that fish home to make a fish print out of it, because uh, if you're going to make a fish print out of that fish, then you're going to have to take that fish home and actually eat it, which is perfectly fine as well. But if you do want to release some of your catch, it's a good idea to practice the techniques I'm about to talk about, so that you give that chance that that fish the best chance at survival. So one of the first things you're going to want to use is the proper net. So a net that actually has a rubber mesh is going to be a lot easier on that fish and it's going to help preserve that fish's slime coat. And um, it's also going to help you leave that fish in the water and handle that fish while you're trying to remove hooks and stuff like that. And actually I'll use the stuff Tony the Trout behind me to talk about some of the fish handling techniques. So just bear with me. So here we have a pretty large stuffed rainbow trout. It's just a toy, but I mean, you could actually catch some rainbow trout this large if you head up your way, Chad, to Northwest PA and target some of the great steelhead opportunities that we have in the state. But say you're trying to let this fish go. You've got that fish in the water, in the net. One of the key things that's important is you are trying to keep that fish wet so that you can preserve that slime coat. Keeping that fish in the water while you safely remove those hooks is a great idea. That's going to help reduce the stress that that fish experiences. So now you've got the hooks out, you've got the fish in the water, you want to get a picture of that fish. Wet your hands prior to actually pulling that fish up out of the water because that's going to help preserve that slime coat. You get your both hands underneath that fish and if you sort of support 
that fish with both hands underneath it like this, maybe just behind the pectoral fins here. And you don't want to squeeze that fish really hard right here because that's actually where that fish's heart is located. Pull that fish out of the water so it's dripping wet. Support that fish. Get your photo and then get that fish right back in the water as quickly as you can. Because remember, as long as that fish is out of the water, it can't breathe. Now when you're going to release that fish and you're handling that fish, kind of just hold that fish in the water and let it regain its energy because that fish is really tired after you fought it um, and actually got it to your net. So letting that fish actually recover its energy before you let it go is really important. And that fish will let you know when it has recovered its energy. And oftentimes when a fish fully recovers its energy, it's gonna leave you with a nice parting gift with a splash to the face as a memory as it takes off. So. That's just some a few some of a few of some of the techniques that you can use when trying to release fish safely. Awesome, Cody. Uh, a couple more questions. Um, and I know you just talked about the slime coat. And can you go over real quick why it's why it's so important? What's uh what's the use of the slime coat for the fish, and why is it so important for the fish health and and for the opportunity for it to survive once you release it? Yeah, so I mean, if you've caught a fish or handled a fish in Pennsylvania, you've probably had some of that slime coat on your hand to realize that fish can be a little bit slimy. Well, just like your skin is your first line of defense, that slime coat is really that first line of defense for that fish. The slime coat can make it different for certain types of parasites to actually attach onto that fish. It can help protect that fish against bacteria, um, against poor, wa poor water quality, and it can also help prevent diseases for that fish. Also, for some of our stream dwelling fishes, when they're in that current, that slime coat can help reduce the drag that that fish experiences while it's in that current. So that way that fish doesn't have to expend as much energy uh, because that fish is trying to save as much energy as possible. So when you degrade that slime coat in any way, you really potentially put that fish at a lot of different risks. Perfect, thanks for all that information. Um, a couple more questions. Uh, what other programs does or do you I uh, teach across the Commonwealth and do you have any programs that you enjoy doing more than the others or, or what are your passions as far as um, teaching others? Well, I mean, getting out there and actually teaching uh, new people how to fish is something that I know we all love and, and seeing somebody get out there, you know, do some things on their own, learn how to catch a fish, actually catch their first fish and then, you know, seeing how happy they are when they catch that first fish and they actually accomplish that goal. I mean, that's really one of the sweetest parts about this job. So we get to do a lot of educational uh, introduction to fishing programs and um, we're sort of in the planning phase of some of those throughout the summer. Now, you know, that's been a little different over the past couple of years due to the pandemic, but uh, we are working out the logistics and trying to adapt with changes for what we're allowed to do. Um, also, I am the Trout in the Classroom Coordinator for the state of Pennsylvania, so uh, we had over 300 uh, almost 400 registered classrooms for the state this year. And even though every classroom wasn't able to take on fish, we were still able to pull off a later shipment for those schools that were able to get back into the classroom. And, and it's great to see, you know, young kids and even high school age kids get introduced uh, to aquatic resources and cold water natural resources in that way. And uh, all the different opportunities that we can provide them with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. And I do wanna mention that Trout in the Classroom is done through a really great partnership between our agency and PATU. Uh, so being able to get involved with different organizations and partnering with those organizations is something that I really enjoy as well. So we can kind of work together as a state to provide all these different opportunities. Perfect, is there a website that if uh, teachers out there may be watching or interested in becoming a TIC classroom, is there is there some website? And I'm sure somebody can put in a link down below, but um, you have the link handy that you can give someone in case they wanna look for more information? So yeah, I mean, you could go to patroutintheclassroom.org. Uh, that's really another great website that just recently got uh, revamped and PATU handles a lot of the website logistics, but PA trout in the classroom.org is where you can go to learn more. And if you know there's any educators out there interested in starting a program, you would send me an email. Um, and that's just at cwhipple at pa.gov. And I can provide you with all the information that you're going to need to get started with actually having trout in your classroom.
Perfect. Um, I'm looking at Facebook. There's not too many questions flowing in today, but um, if you have anything else you want to say or or to wrap this up, I mean, it's been got almost 30 minutes, so um, I'll let you have the last word, and then we'll kick it over to Andy. And uh, you know, just uh, stay tuned at uh, 2 p.m. today. We'll talk to Tim Wilson, our area one fisheries biologist, about the Pamituming fishery and some of the um, studying that he's doing in that lake and, and what it kind of increases in species and just uh, a really cool segment about um, how the Pamituming fisheries are coming back. So I'll leave it with you, Cody, to take the last word and then back over to Andy, unless we get a question between now and then. Okay, uh, another thing I'd like to plug, and you saw it a little bit in the video uh, on, off to the side, we're scrolling through and we were talking about Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission's activities and education portal. So this is a place where you can go and it kind of just organizes all of the different learning resources or educational resources that we have with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. So you'll notice it's organized into a bunch of different categories. So if you're looking for some activities, um, for some different ideas for what you can do in terms of aquatic resource education, whether it be lakes, streams, rivers, water pollution, aquatic macroinvertebrates, even some stuff just about the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. You can find uh, different learning resources on paddling and boating in Pennsylvania. Uh, check out that activities and education portal. You can find it right on our website, and it's a really great place to start finding some different tools that you can use in your classroom, uh, just if there's any education educators watching this or maybe if they're going to watch it in the future all right and we did get one question from facebook uh west would like to know do you the fish and, does the fish and boat commission ever go to universities to promote co collegiate bass fishing or anything about uh you know bass fishing in in high school and bass fishing in colleges and especially across the country bass fishing is one of the more popular sports a lot of people anglers enjoy engaging in um you know the pros do it the kayak fishing is becoming huge across the country and those are one of the species that a lot of kayak anglers enjoy targeting so do you have anything to to add about that um i personally haven't traveled to any universities uh to to promote the collegiate bass fishing or to talk about some of the techniques used in collegiate bass fishing or anything like that. I'm not aware of anyone in our bureau that that actually has, so I'm not sure I can really speak to that. Um, maybe you can, Chad. Uh, but yeah, no, that's something that's something that I haven't done, but something we could consider. Yeah, I mean, I know, I know that uh, high school bass fishing. There's a lot of high schools getting involved in the sport. Um, FLW. Bassmasters, um, you know, Major League Fishing, they're all a part of the, the bass fishing movement and across the country and and kayak fishing is another avenue that anybody can get into with a relatively inexpensive cost. Uh, you just need a kayak and, you know, some uh, added equipment to do the, the measuring of the fish and, and submit it on a, and an app. So it's, it's really gaining steam across the country and it's something that, you know, we definitely like to see a bunch of anglers out there on the waters. The amount of license sales from last year, as well as the launch permit sales have been increasing in the state of Pennsylvania and it continues to increase this year. So that's a good sign that everybody's getting out there and enjoying the waters and enjoying all the kind of recreation we have in the state of Pennsylvania. That's the last question that I, I've got. So if Andy's out there, if he wants to uh, wrap it up for, the 9 or the 10 a.m. session. Uh, we'll look forward to the 2 p.m. session. All right. Yes. Thanks, gentlemen. Uh, appreciate both of your time today. And uh, <clears throat> yep, if, or everybody, if you're just tuning in now, catching us at the end, our next session will be at 2 p.m. And uh, I'm going to bring up the slide one more time just to talk about our huntfish.pa.gov. So bear with me for a second there. All right, and if you haven't purchased your fishing license yet for the year, or you're considering purchasing your fishing license for the first time, check out our huntfish.pa.gov website. If you already have a customer ID from past fishing license purchases, you can use that to access the system. 
This is our new online recreation licensing platform where you can buy a fishing license, renew boat registration, or get that launch permit. Um, it's you know, user-friendly features for faster transactions, and it's convenient access from anywhere, your mobile devices or off of the laptop. All right, everyone, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you at 2 p.m. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody.